Welcome to the Pop Enthusiast. I'm Paul. I am very excited for this uh, third episode of the Collector Convo series. Uh, we have Brandon uh, Karagosian. Did I pronounce that right, Brandon? Is that right? We, we yeah, practiced you did. a couple times yeah. before <laughs> we started, and I thought I was going to mess it up. So, Brandon <laughs> Karagosian, thank you so much for being here. So, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. You bet. You bet. I'm really excited to get through uh, your collection and get a walkthrough. So, so you have uh up to today up to date a complete set of the funko pop ad icons is that correct, correct? yes which is amazing yep. that is amazing i i've never heard anybody who has a complete set i'm sure there's people that do but i've mm. never heard of any i've never known anybody that has a complete set which is really awesome so i'm i'm honored yeah. to know you that, that's awesome thank you thank you yes so thank you for joining the channel here today for, for this third episode of the Collector Convo series where we talk to collectors all over the world and have them showcase their collections and just talk a little bit about how they got into uh, Funko Pop collecting, why you do it, wh what are your favorites. You know, I can see some some awesome pops behind you right now that mm -hmm. I can't wait to kind of get into and talk about. So um, as always, if, if you if you like these types of videos, if you like pop culture and Funko Pop type videos, make sure you click the subscribe button as well to follow uh, this channel, The Pop Enthusiast. So, so let's get started. So Brandon, if I can ask, uh, when did you start collecting Funko Pops and how did you get into it? So when I started collecting Funko Pops, I started about two and a half years ago. Um, what actually got me started into the Funko Pops like entirely, I actually never even thought about collecting the ad icons at first. I figured I would start small, you know what I mean, to get to specifics. Uh, I actually started out with the Universal Monster set. Now, I didn't have um, all of them. I had like basically the comments. So I had like Wolfman, the Mummy, uh, mm -hmm. the Creature, Family of the Opera, etc. And that was it. And then once I found out that they did the ad icons, I actually originally just wanted the monster cereals because as growing up, my father was into monster cereals and then I got into monster cereals. So I always wanted to have those as well. And yeah. then after I got the, um, I was looking into the Funko Pops and whatnot. I remember seeing that the originals, I think at the time were like maybe about, about $150, $200. Um, so I settled for at the time when they dropped were the Funko Shop exclusives where they're holding the cereal bowls, acting like they're about to eat. Yes. And then after that, I started getting um, Fruit Brute and Yummy Mummy. And I thought I was done right there. I figured, <laughs> you know, and this is it. I don't need no more. <laughs> this was like basically a done deal. I got the Universal Monsters. I got three Monster Cereals. I ordered the three, the five Monster Cereals. And let me and... guess what happened. They dropped Tony the Tiger on you. Is that what happened? Oh, yeah. No, the, um, I, this was actually quite funny. I actually, um, they didn't, I never even knew Tony the Tiger was made yet. Um, what was actually got me into more going into it was they dropped um, Fruit Pie the Magician. And yeah. I was like, Oh, they got the hostess and my dad's in the hostess too. So I was like, well, I was in the hostess as well. And I was like, oh, well, I'll get the fruit pie, the magician. And then after I missed out on it, I felt like after that, it was like basically like I was just going down the rabbit hole because I was like buying the fruit pie, then went Twinkie, then King Ding Dong. And then here we are about 300 more <laughs> Funko Pops today. <laughs> right. Right. So now having a complete set of ad icons. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, that's including the really rare, the chase versions of some of the, not, not only just the original Boo Berry and, and Frankenberry and Count Chocolate, but the chase versions as well. Of the Correct, life, yes. Which are really hard to find, really expensive and mm. really awesome. So I can't, can't wait to, to see those. Um, so you got started around, so what year was it when that you got started? Ooh, 2018, I believe. Um, cause it was actually a little bit before my wife and I met, I remember. And that's when, uh, I believe I started give or take around that time. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So she was aware, uh, so it hadn't, it hadn't grown to this yet. Yeah, no, it definitely hasn't grown to this yet. When, um, I first started doing the Funko Pops, she's been basically engaging with me with the, the whole time we've been together. Um, when, when they, um, did the GameStop uh, Black Fridays when they did the Monster Cereal Pop Pez dispensers. Um, that was actually the first time that we actually started buying those all together because I was like, oh, they got the Monster Cereal Pop Pez. I'm like, I gotta have these. <laughs> and then we were buying them all and everything. And then she never cared about the Funko Pops um, in depth, I want to say. 
um, I was able to buy her. <clears throat> I was able to buy her the Otter Pops because when she hasn't had any of the Funko Pops yet, but when they came out and they were dropping uh, Otter Pops at the time, they were doing the Green Giant and um, Kool Aid. They had all those up as well, so yeah. she wanted all of them, and I was able to buy them all for her. And then later on down the line, I was able to buy her the Louis Blue at a pretty good price. Oh, okay. so yeah, she's. So yeah, she was actually been with me with it through literally the whole journey. <laughs> so maybe we'll get some comments from her later. Uh, <laughs> so it's oh, always sure. it's always interesting to you know when there's a spouse involved or a, a partner involved and kind of what they think about the collection and you know that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, so that's cool. Yeah, she yeah she's gotten me a few of the Funko Pops. I remember she got me the. Um, the sweet tiny old set for uh the hostess set and then she was able to get me uh the dum dums drum man captain crook she she gets me stuff like that um when it comes like anniversaries or like valentine's day or sweetest day and then some of the ones that i don't have unfortunately um on hand that with me um mm -hmm. she bought me some of the cuphead funko pops and then there was like a couple of the mega man funko pops so yeah she's been able she's like basically been with me through this the whole time <laughs> So would it be fair to say she's a she's a complicit enabler? Is that yes, <laughs> yes, yes. At times where she says I can't have anything, I'll be like I need this, I want this, and then she'll just be, she'll just basically like bend over and <laughs> just be able to grab it for me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the cool things about collecting, and and I wanted to see what you thought about it. Just the connection. We hear a lot of people talk about the Funko family, the Funko community you know people collectors talking and connecting with each other have you met anybody that you probably wouldn't have met otherwise because you collect pops and what kind of like what is that connection to you and what, what do you think that's about honestly it's crazy because before i did funko pops i actually was in the action figures and whatnot and i met some okay people in the action figure groups don't get me wrong there's some cool people in there but a lot of them i want to say were more on the snobby side and then once i got into funko pops um i met some pretty cool people when i first started out um i met my friend brian he literally has been with me for two and a half years i that's actually where i got most of my funko pops from um, because he had extras and whatnot. The first time we met actually was when um, I was buying from him about two, three thousand dollars worth of Funko Pops. Nothing like uh, crazy. Um, I actually bought from him like uh, both of his Tony the Tigers, and then I bought like a bunch of the common pops. You know what I mean? Just to kind of add it all up. Yeah. Um, but over time, I met some pretty cool people that have helped me along the journey. I was able to connect with them and everything, talk about Funkos. Um, a lot of them I still talk to today. And going from action figures to Funko Pops, I actually felt like that was like um, night and day, basically. Um, because a lot of people in the Funko community were a lot more friendlier. They were a lot more engaging rather than action figure groups. Because in the action figure groups, they were always just complaining. And it was, uh, it was always about money with them. It was never about actually appreciating the figure. It was never about appreciating like its entire look and whatnot. With Funko Pops, you know what I mean? Even though it's just a bobblehead, you can appreciate it for how it is. And you can appreciate the fact that something that's so personal uh, to you and so sentimental was actually created. You know what I mean? And the nice thing is too, is that um, with the Funkos as well, which I never seen any action figure groups is how like these certain pieces are able to connect you with someone else. So like I seen a bunch of people that buy things um, and it reminds them of their mother or their grandmother, their father, or even like vice versa. If their uh, family buy something for them, like, you know what I mean? You get that heartwarming feeling. And that's why I like to see rather than all that negativity that I seen in the action figure groups. But yeah. overall, I think like doing this stuff with the Funko Pops and engaging with a lot of the groups and whatnot, I actually like talking to them about the Funko Pops. And then, we, you know what I mean? We get together and like, see, what do you hope that that's made and whatnot? You know, I tell them I want freaky cereal and everything for <laughs> Ralston. Always been trying to message Funko about it. Never been made yet, but still yeah. hoping. <laughs> so I'm like, it, it's actually pretty nice. It's very relieving. And the fact that I was able to um, put a lot of my effort and put a lot of like money towards the Funko Pops, I feel 
a lot better towards that than rather when I did when I did the action figures. And plus, the nice thing is, is that sometimes when um, I was going through like hard times, not financial wise, like mental wise, the Mm -hmm. nice thing is, is that I actually had these, I had my wife, I had our kids, you know, I mean, I had these like basically to make me happy. (laughs) Yeah, so it kind of helps. It does help us get through some rough times in addition to a lot of other things, you know. Mm. So you hit on something really interesting that I I haven't really thought of before or heard anybody really quite explain it that way. But I think it makes sense that, I mean, Funko Pops, they're more detailed now than they used to be, of course, but they're Mm. not they're not super detailed to the point of like action figures, you know, like the Mm. articulation. I I can just hear you know maybe some people in action figure groups complaining about it's not articulated enough or it's not this Mm -hmm. or that or you know but Funko Pops they look I mean they they have big black eyes and no mouths and I mean so it's obviously it's not trying to be as an exact yeah Mm -hmm. so I wonder like what you hit on this I wonder if that's if that's part of the appeal in the sense that it represents it's more about what it represents than what it is you know for sure yeah and that's what um I actually seen in one of the action figure groups because like you said a lot of people don't like the i don't say a lot of people but half of the people don't like funko pops because like you said they're not articulate they can't do nothing cool you know i mean they're just standing there and whatnot but what i agreed with someone on the action figure group is the reason people like funko pops is because that's as close as we're going to get to something that has never been made that's being made you know what i mean so i actually agreed with that and the cool thing is like you said they're not very detailed you know what i mean a lot of us can look past that because it's like there's this character i want it i I love him her you know what i mean like i gotta have it yeah. rather than an action figure nowadays the action figures only focus on dc marvel and star wars you know what i mean sometimes you get some other ones in there but that's basically what today's culture is all about is marvel dc and star wars you know what i mean funko pops there's like a wide variety and i try to tell people you know what i mean the cool thing about the funko pops and i've actually had a few people that i used to work with when i used to work at pet supply plus they never liked uh the funko pops or nothing like you said they got the big beady black guys nobody likes having that and right. my boss never liked that either because he's seen some of them. He's like, you know, I can do the ones with sunglasses and the ones that I can't do the ones like just looking at you. Yeah. And I tell, I used to show them all the time. Even when I used to work at Quicken Loans, I showed them all my bosses. You know what I mean? I used to show them all my Funko Pops. And I used to tell them, like, why they were so cool. The ad icons, I thought they were cool because they're very, very unique in their own way, especially with the different Funko Pops. They got the certain poses. They got the certain colors, the likeliness, you know what I mean? And then just that wow factor is just what gets me, especially with the ad icons. Granted, they do some stuff that doesn't appeal to others than what it does to certain people. Like, um, for instance, the Sweet Tiny was just, uh, what, I think, like silver or chrome. And just stuff like that, you know, I mean, even though a lot of people didn't like it, I did because I thought it was pretty cool, especially recognizing that this is how long they've been, you know, I mean, in the business. uh, And then they were able to do all these other certain things and whatnot. So, yeah. 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 There's definitely those specialties or niches that some people have, like you like with you with the ad icons, you Mm. know, and that's really awesome to be able to. So, yeah, that, that's such an interesting point that it's there. So like I just happen to have a couple sitting just randomly on the desk. here. Mm-hmm. This I, I just hadn't got them up on the shelves yet. But like, you know, Kim Boggs from, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Edward Scissorhands. Like there's just the beady eyes. There's no mouth. The head is big, you know, and that's the first thing I hear people say if they're if they're being negative about Funko Pops. It's like they're ugly. There's no pupils. What you know, do you really like them staring at you all the time? You know, that, yeah. that kind of stuff. But you know, it does represent the character and it's more about what it represents than what, what it looks like. And that's, yeah. And people need to be, yeah. And it's crazy because some people can't get past their looks and it's like, well, like for instance, like you said, you got those hanging out. I got like, you know I mean? I got these guys just cruising (laughs) around him and mayor McCheese. And I'm like, you know, even though they don't look as detailed, I think they look detailed enough. I think they look as detailed enough to the character. We don't need like, you know, I mean, a six inch action figure to pose around him blowing a whistle. You know what I mean? Him just looking like that is more than perfect. That's like, like I said, that's about as close as we're going to get to him ever coming into, you know what I mean? To the scene and whatnot, you know what I mean? And it's crazy because 
for them to create this, if you look at their um, wacky wobblers and whatnot, you know what I mean? That's even cool as well because mm-hmm. half of the stuff that I see is wacky wobblers. I have hope that maybe one day they'll actually be brought into Funko Pop. So like, like I said with the Freakies, even though I'm pretty sure they're probably not going to put that at the top of their priority list. I know that with um, the Wacky Wobblers, they have the different versions of Boss Moss. So I'm like, you know, I mean, I have hope that one day he'll at least be able to come out. He might be an Emerald City Comic Con exclusive for all we know because he's green. So, you know, what I mean, there's like a lot of hope I can have and whatnot, especially with these ad icons. Well, I think I saw you. You're wearing a Quake shirt, right? Uh, yep, Quake. <laughs> Quake. That's awesome. So the he was, you know, he was one that I it was Quake. And who, who was it that came out with him on the phone? Quisp. Quisp, yeah. So yep. they they were wacky wobblers. They were cereal, you know. <clears throat> and then they came out with those. So there's definitely hope. There's definitely. Hope. Oh yeah, for sure. I remember when I used to. Um, I remember when I first seen about Quake and Quisp. Now at the time, I didn't know them that much. I knew a little bit of them because at the time when I was younger, I used to look up, you know, I mean retro cereals and whatnot. And I remember they used to pop up from time and time again. And I remember that they created the, um, I know you said the Wacky Wires, they had those, and then they had um, the Pop Pez, which I don't think this is where that shirt came from. I think think it might have been custom made, because I know they have different shirts um, made for them. Um, But I remember when they made those, and then they... um, they made then, I think, what, one of the Comic-Cons they made, uh, or maybe it wasn't a comic I think it was a Funko Shop exclusive, with uh, vinyl pieces, the look like the blocky versions of them. Yeah, yes. I can't think. Vinyl missing a letter. Well, right. Yeah, I can't think, I cannot think of what those were like. I think they're just called vinyls. And yeah. um, I remember I posted on the one of the Funko groups, I said, you know, what are the odds that we're going to get an actual Funk Pop? I'm like, they made the Pez. I'm like, they made the vinyls. I was like, so what are the odds that they're going to be making yeah. this? Come on, you're right there, I, right? I mean, you're teasing. That, Do it. Yeah, and that's what I said. And I was, I remember they all said that they would not make it. Um, I remember they said that that was like out of reach. And I'm like, well, that's pretty weird. I'm like, because they made the other two. I was like, you know, I got hope. I'm like, you know, they're, I'm sure they're going to make them one day. Yeah. And then, yeah, about a few weeks later, they dropped that double bundle on us. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, there you go. I guess that's they're all she wrote. With, they're just screwing with us. That's all. Mm-hmm. That they, they, they just, you know, no, we'll never do that. Tomorrow it comes out. You know, I know. Oh, God, I've been a victim of that multiple, uh, multiple times. <laughs> so cool. So that's awesome. So do you still collect action figures or did you get away from that? So I used to do um, action figures. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. Um, they have the Hasbro Marvel Legends. Mm-hmm. Um, I, at the time before I did Funko Pop, I had every single series. I had every single Build-A-Figure, exclusive, Comic-Con exclusive. I had every single figure. And I remember that, and I'm not lying to you, this made me cry too. I'm not, because I was like, because those things were like, those got me through a depression. So I was like, you know, it was really hard for me to let them go. Yeah. And I got upset because when I let them go, it just felt like a piece of me was going away. And, but I knew I had them on totes at the time. I didn't have no space for them to put up on a wall. You know what I mean? Display them, everything else like that. So I had to make that hard decision of getting rid of them. And when I did do that, it felt like a sign of relief because in the back of my head, I know that if I ever want to um, get them back, that I can just rebuy them, you know what I mean? Because they're not as only like Funko Pops or not like a thousand pieces or nothing like that. <laughs> they're not where I'm going to actually want to keep them. Right. So I used to have them on whatnot. And then um, later on, as I got to the Funko Pops, I had like the X-Men and then I had all the symbiotes for Venom and whatnot. I used to have them all. And then recently I just got rid of a handful of my symbiotes because I made room for my Funkos. I said that was a little more important than, than action figures. Um, but yeah, I used to have them on everything. And then I still, from time to time, I customize, I was able to turn, uh, the Hasbro build a figure abomination into, uh, a bomb. And then I usually get myself pretty, um, 
artistic when it comes to the action figures because I feel like, you know what I mean, if they're not being made, may as well put your all into it as if this is, like, the one that's going to be promoted, you know what I mean? So I used to do all that all the time. So, yeah, I, the action figures, I had about as many of them as I had Funko Pops, just on totes. And, okay. yeah, I think that was, like, the hardest thing is just getting rid of them. But I knew that they would be more appreciated in someone else's home that would be able to display them rather than just sitting in totes collecting dust. Yeah, and that speaks to the meaning of it too, right? The the people's collections, they there's a meaning and a connection there with with them and their and their that time in their life or a previous time in their life, or it's more than just items that are in yeah. the, you know, there, there's mm-hmm. a deeper connection. For for some for some of us, there there is that deeper connection. Yeah. I, I'll tell you one reason why I don't do action figures um is is not is not as deep as that at all. It's, it's, it's my wife says I can't, she, she, she basically says it's like one collection. I can't have more than one collection. So that's, you know, what she's told me. She's like pops. That's mm. it. You know, I do comic books and she kind of lets that slide, but um, you know, pops. Yeah. Pops is basically bit. where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into it. If you want to, we can, uh, we can do the walkthrough and. Uh, yeah, for sure. There we go. Then there's all the count chocolates. Those are all the ones I got from Brian. And the cool thing is they're all mint too. It took me about a year and a half to find them all mint and whatnot. So I was like <laughs> trying oh, to get them all situated. So and not right only there, are they, these are mint, the 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 the, the chase uh blueberry, the metallic, these are all mint. So the chase is actually not mint. Um there's actually like a little bit of damage right on each like right here, for instance, and then a little bit towards the thing. Uh, give me one second. I'll see if I can. There we go. Yeah, there's like damage right there and then a little bit towards the top and whatnot. He's the only one that is damaged, <laughs> but I wasn't complaining because I was like, you know. Amazing. I was, yeah, I wasn't complaining because he was, you know, in 24 pieces. And then there's the big boy, which I also got from Brian. And then there's each of my bullseyes. And then there's my Colonel Sanders, which I figured he was an ad icon for KFC because that's literally the only one yeah. we got for him. Well, let, let me let me point something out that I just see here. That so the the um, the target dog bullseye. Yes. Well, you have you have both sticker flocks, right? So they, there was two that came out. There was the regular flock, and then they came out with the Comic Con flock. Is that what those are? The, the different. So what it is, and it's pretty weird, is they actually released um, two different versions for him right here. They released later on. Um, he, if you can see it, he's got the red collar. Mm-hmm. And then he's got the gold collar. At the time when they dropped the flock, uh, bullseye he was to have the gold collar the reason they did the san diego comic-con one was just um they were selling pops at the time um to be debuted um they have him and then they had the green giant two pack which i don't have the uh debut one mm-hmm. but yeah that was like the only difference is that it was just the collars and then there's uh fruit fruit and yummy mummy then both my tony the tigers there's Rosie the River, which I figure she was an ad icon as well, uh, just because she was one of the ad icons for, like, the war. Mm-hmm. And then there's Cocoa Puffs for, uh, yeah, Sonya Cuckoo. And then both of my tricks. Now, did you get any oh. of these on the Funko Shop drops, or did you no, get No, these, ap- these are all aftermarket. The only ones I got in the Funko Shop when I started getting them was... Uh, let me remember. Uh, it's actually a good question. Which one did I get? <laughs> um, I think it started with King Ding Dong. I think okay. it was him because I tried first with the uh, metallic toucan, and then that didn't work out in my favor. And then there's Uncle Sam, which, again, I figured he was an ad icon for the war. Yeah. There's my Jeffrey. This one right here, I got when they shut down Toys R Us. My boss gave everybody – that worked there each at um, a flock Jeffrey. So that's pretty sentimental to me. And then this right here, I got after they decided to do the tickets for like, I think like 50 bucks. I think now, I now, have that. you ever opened that? Did you, did you get the golden ticket? Did nope. You know? I never got the golden ticket. Oh. Nope. I, I checked that bad boy and I didn't get nothing. <laughs> and then there's the Toucan Sam. And then there's my metallic. This one right here, I tried getting my work at Quicken Loans. I was so mad because I had him in my cart and I was paying for him, but Amazon glitched on me, so I wasn't able to buy him when I lost him. Oh my god, that was the biggest slap Toucan in the face Sam. ever. Toucan Sam was the bane of how I don't know how many people I 
I missed the two, the first, the regular Toucan Sam. I don't have the metallic one. Uh, I didn't even try for the metallic one, but yeah, the metallic one. He's actually, I don't know how much he is, but at the time I think he was like at $300. I don't know how much he is now. Cause I know a lot of the thousand pieces are going up in price nowadays. I'll look it up. I'll look it up while we're going through this. We'll see for sure. And then there's the captain crunch. Then there's the Crunchberry. And the cool thing with my collection, too, is I have no shared stickers at all. I made sure to swap those all out when I was building my collection up. <laughs> oh, wow. That's impressive. That's awesome. And then Sean LaFoot. And then both of my Noids. The Glow in the Dark is the one Amanda got me for one of my anniversaries or my birthday, one of the two. Oh, cool. So you have the shirt. Did that come with a T-shirt, I think? Yep, I got the T-shirt as well. It actually was pretty cool. It came in like a Domino pizza box. <laughs> oh, cool. And then Singapore Girl, Bazooka Joe, Cosmic Captain Crunch, Buzz the Bee, Sugar Bear, Big Boy. There's Dig'em Frog. Then there's Fruit Pie the Magician. Then his Sweet Tiny Old Version. And then my Twinkie the Kid. Then there's my Chase Twinkie with the Chase sticker upside down. <laughs> and then there's the Sweet Tiny Old Version. And then... Right here is my King Ding Dong, the Sweet Penny version, which is literally blinding my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know those, those, uh, the the silver ones they look actually cooler than you might than I thought that I thought. That's what cool. I thought too. I thought they were actually pretty cool. I was hoping that they would have released the other hostess characters so we could have got like all seven of them. But you mm -hmm. know, one can only wish. <laughs> and yeah. then there's the Iron Man Jeffrey. Then there's my Jolly Bee. Don't wait. Let me see if I can block that out. Probably not. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, I guess I'll tilt it. And then there's the Flock Jolly Bee, mm. which I got from my buddy in the Philippines. I got I got all my Jolly Bees from my friend in the Philippines. Oh, nice. And then there's the four thousand piece metallic, and then the thousand piece gold. I will not forget. Right after I lost um, the thousand piece uh, two can Sam, I promise you about. Five minutes later, he contacted me and he said he had one of these for sale for like about three, four hundred dollars. And I'm like, that, oh. I bought it up real quick. I was like, I guess it'll fill in the void that I was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's both of my Twinkie the Kids, the Glow in the Dark, and then the normal version with it, which he's actually that's his retro version. It was crazy that they did that. They switched them all around. They came out nowhere, made him the chase, and then him the common, and then they flopped the dome. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and then cool. here are the three that started it all: Count Chocula, Frankenberry, Booberry, and then there's Captain Crunch, and then Pillsbury Doughboy, and then there's his Emerald City Comic Con version holding up that little cookie. And then the Green Giant and the Sprout. I actually thought when they did the Pillsbury, even though they came out with the other versions of them, I actually figured we were going to get like a Thanksgiving Day one, an Independence right. Day one, because they made all the other holidays. And I'm like, oh, we might get more. <laughs> I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Oh, I'm sure we will, too. I'm sure they ain't done with him. So I, ju I, just, a I just found, uh, so the Metallic Toucan Sam is going, it's a 370 right now. Okay, so he's still pretty steady price. Yeah, it's crazy. The Louis Blue and then like, um, I know the Louis Blue went up in price. He's at about $500 now. I remember they said, um, I remember I bought mine for $150 at the time because they had that, it, it spiked down for a second mm -hmm. and then it came and... Yeah, it spiked back up again about five hundred. Then there's pun Poncho Punch, almost said Poncho, Alexander the Grape, and then there's Strawberry Short Kook. There he is. Then there's my Louis Blue, which he was my first Comic Con vert. He's my first Comic Con pop. That was the first one I actually got when um, he came out. When um, I started doing the Comic Cons, he was the first one that I got to start off that one right there. Now, how many pieces is he? Cool. Uh, he is 1,000 pieces. Cool. I'm not lying to you. I actually thought because they made all the other ones, I actually thought they would have made him with a white flower. But then when I looked on the back of the Funko, uh, when I looked on the back of him to see them all, I realized that he was with the yellow flower, so I knew they weren't going to be doing uh, any more of him, like into a yeah. different version. And then let me move him out of the way. There's Sir Isaac Lime. Sorry, I don't mean to. Eh, I guess you can probably see him. Oh, that's, those are the sodas, right? Is that those are the soda figures? 
yep, those are all my soda figures. I didn't know where to put them at the moment, so I figured here would have been the best spot. Oh, that's and then cool. there's a little Thanks, there's a little orphan orange with his little little dog. Then there's the Jolly Bee in the Barong outfit. And then there's the glow in the dark version. And then there's my Peter Pez. Move them all the way. And then there's the Toy Tokyo version. I remember someone tried selling me him for like about three hundred dollars, and I passed on that. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> there's the two can for the San Diego Comic Con one. And then there's Charlie Tuna. And then Wally Warhead. Which, uh, yeah, he was a pre- he was one of my favorites as well because I like how they displayed warheads on top of his head like that. I thought that was pretty cool, especially with the colors. And then there's Milton the Toaster. Uh, Milton, Milton, Milton. He's one I'm still looking for. I'm still looking for. Yeah, he's actually not that hard to find, believe it or not. I think you probably pay about thirty dollars, maybe a little less than that, unless he's skyrocketed. But I don't know why he would. <laughs> and then there's the Fanta Clown. There's the Coca-Cola Polar Bear. There's the Flocked One. There's Mr. Owl looking his lollipop. There's the Tony the Tiger. Nice, the Hollywood, Funko Hollywood. Mm-hmm. There's both the Mimic the Monkeys. I had to look everywhere for him and for the Blonde Pez Girl because I could not find him in official stickers. It was a pain in the butt. <laughs> and then there's the Doughboy with all of his cookies and whatnot. And then both of his... Both of the Captain Cupcakes. I had to glue his arm back on because when I got him initially, his arm broke off. And I'm like, well, I'm not sending off all, all four pops back because his arm. I was like, I was glue it. Oh, and yeah, he looked pretty perfect with it being blended in. <laughs> so let me ask you about those, the the, tri- yes. the the silver ones. So are they, do they feel like a chrome pop? Are they kind of really light and hollow, like the chrome versions? So with them, they actually um, feel more light and hollow. Believe it or not, the Captain Cupcake pretty, feels pretty solid, but the other ones felt more hollow. Got it. And I see there's like a separate sticker on the on the silver one too. There's like an additional. What does that say? It's uh... so this is actually a part of the box. This is the Sweet Tiny Old version. It says Sweet Tiny Old. The world can use more hostess. It says, and then it shows how long it's been. It says I think nineteen. Uh, I'm gonna get my glasses off and see. Nineteen nineteen. It says, and then to 2019. What a cupcakes. And then Quake and Quisp. <coughs> and then over here is Jeffrey as Batman. Then Big Yella. Then both of the icy polar bears. Have you uh, have you smelled the scented one? What is it? What does it smell like? If you yeah, smell- actually, it's, believe it or not, my son and my daughter have um, each one of those, and I smelled it, and it's very heavy scented with grape. <laughs> it's uh- crazy. <laughs> it smells exactly like her. Now I got the uh, uh, stink or and he sent it. I'm like, I'm not busting him open. <laughs> and I heard, see, I, I asked someone on the Funko groups how much, um, what he smelled like. And someone said he smelled like dirty laundry. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to test those waters. <laughs> there's a swamp, then, thing. there's a swamp thing scented pop. He, and he smells like dirt. Oh, he, God. Like dirt. <sighs> so it's really on, on point, which is cool. Mm hmm. And then there's the Energizer bunnies. There's the flocked version, which is crazy because I seen they had them at GameStop too with the GameStop sticker. But I'm like, I wanted, I want Funko Shop more. Yeah, that's a that, that would I would consider that a shared exclusive, you know, in games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's the Diamond Collection. Then there's the man with a plan, big boy that everyone was killing themselves over. <laughs> How did you he, get? It? Huh. How did you get that one? How did, where did you find So him? I actually bought him on eBay for $100 um, at the time. Um, I was looking into possibly getting another one just to have as backup just in case because a lot of the pops come damaged nowadays. Mm-hmm. And um, when I tried figuring that all out and whatnot, they like skyrocketed him at about $300. He's, he's up there. So <laughs> if you ever find one for cheap, I would snag it. <laughs> Oh, wow. I didn't realize he was that expensive. That's awesome. He is because what's crazy is that minus the sunglasses, this is the San Diego Comic-Con mold. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So it's not the... Yeah, inside, if you can see, he's got the hamburger. Yeah, it's literally the San Diego Comic-Con mold just with sunglasses. So I can see why people jumped the gun on him. Yeah. And then there's Smokey the Bear. And then there's him flocked and then him with the bucket. 
And then Chester Cheetah. I just I was just eating uh, for Walmart. Maybe I don't know if you've seen the 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 Cheetah Cheetos popcorn tins. Have you seen those? Yep, I seen those. I was like tempted to get one just to have. <laughs> They're very good. Yeah, the tin. I'm keeping the tin too. It's got the hot mm. regular popcorn. And there's them. Now the crazy thing is, is that with Lil Sweet, um, the crazy thing is, is that when before I got him, I was I think working at I think I was working at Pets Five Plus at the time. Honest to God, and I remember when they um when they were dropping the pop and everything. I remember nobody could find the Funko um, labeled uh dr pepper so they mm-hmm. had to make everything like they use the normal pops too so i was like sitting over there and i'm like looking for all of them and i'm like find out after the fact you could just use normal dr pepper <laughs> pops i'm like I'm like oh geez and then these guys i love the mcdonald's line just everything about them i tried messaging the person that played ron mcdonald's see if we could autograph and i got nothing back yet <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good I'm idea. hoping I can, I'm going to probably try to get them loose because I want to try to get the McDonald's Funko Pops all loose as well. Um, and this way I can display them since they're dropping all the fry guys, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're coming out with Early Bird and then they're coming out with um, all the chicken nuggets. So I'm assuming you pre-ordered all those? Yep, I pre-ordered those. And then I pre-ordered two sets as well for my kids because oh. they collect Funkos as well. I actually got them started into it. <laughs> of course. How could you? No, wait, is that another big boy? Yep, this one's just like the number 24 big boy. Oh, got it. Okay. So it's a, yep. it's a newer mold, but he's got sunglasses. Correct. Yeah. Nice. And then there's Hetty Spaghetti, which she's 5,000 pieces glittered. And then Captain Crook. And then Jack in the Box. And then Toucan. Nice. Look at those two. Then the Astro Toucan. Then the Red Astro Toucan, which is also 1,000 pieces. And then Jeffrey, the, I mean, Jeffrey, Jeffrey is Superman. And then there's the Dum Dums Drum Men. And the Emerald City Crusader, which I figure is an ad icon as well, because he really represents uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Then there's all the keychains. And then whoop, one fell over. Oh, no. Well, I'll get over here first. And then there's Captain Crunch. Kool-Aid. Oh, that's so which I spent. Cool, man. When I went to uh, go to the Target Con, I remember I got him um, and a couple other pieces. I think, I don't remember who else it was. Oh, yeah, it was Rosie the Riveter and Uncle Sam. I forgot. Yep, those are the ones I got as well for oh. them. And then there's Tony the Tiger, Big Boy, Frankenberry, Count Chocula, Bullseye, and then Coca Cola Bear. Those ten inch, the 10 inch ones are really cool. The they don't have a boo berry yet, do they? A 10 inch, no. Boo-berry. We a lot of people actually thought that they lost the license for him because they haven't seen him pop up. And then I was assuming we'd get him at some point because last year they were pumping out ad icon 10 inches like crazy, and then they stopped doing it this year. <laughs> Let me ask you a question because the 10 inches remind me of this. Have you have you heard of the um, the Ron English serial killer line? Have you heard? No, of I actually ha- no, I don't think I have. So they used to FYE used to sell them and they, they've been on clearance for a while and it's hard. They're hard to find right now. And I, I was able to pick up a bunch of them, but it's it's a play on the word serial killers, you know, but they're serial with a C. And it's it's kind of like an obese for it's an obese version of. All oh, the- I know what you're talking about. Yep. I know what you're talking about. I seen one that was a tricks rabbit. I cannot think of what it what his name was but i know because it had like a fat version of him <laughs> yes and there's like fat tony the tony the tiger Have, are, are those appealing to you is that something you want to add to your collection or um probably not there's some that i would probably not add to the collection um what the funko sodas i actually with them i thought they were pretty appealing mm-hmm. each of them um i actually wasn't even gonna plan on getting these no lie i was not gonna plan on getting any, any of these and then I don't know, they just like grew on to me because I seen everybody else have them. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm like, they, they probably do better in person. You know what I mean? So I was like, they probably would be better. The sodas have really taken off. I don't, I don't have any sodas myself. I didn't, I didn't get any of them yet, but they really seem to have taken off in popularity. Oh yeah. I love sodas. They're amazing. <laughs> right there. I got their sodas all just right there. I like their sodas. I keep them on my back wall back there just because I like having them decorated and everything else like that. I like how they are and whatnot. Like, I think these are like pretty cool, especially yeah. with how they are and you got the colors and whatnot. I think it's like the most awesome thing ever. 
when they, over when they here, first came out, when they first came out, I thought I thought it was actual soda because you know what this. I actually soda. thought that was what it was too. I'm like, why are they coming out with Funko soda? I'm like, is this going to taste <laughs> right. bad as Funko cereal? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I see number figures inside. Do like I said, the only thing that was pulling me in was the uh, the monster cereals. If they didn't pull me in, I probably would not care for them. But now that you say something about the Ron English, I might consider them depending on how they all look. Now they look a little too. I have a bunch of them. I'd be, I can grab some if you want to see them. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, I would definitely appreciate that. Tell your wife not to get mad at me. If I, if I show them and and you like them and you want to go get them, (laughs) I'm not trying to influence you anyway, but I'll, I'll go get it. So yeah. So I just grabbed some of these cereal, cereal killer, uh, Ron English figures. So you mentioned Tricks the Rabbit. So here's the first one. I'll, I'll show you. So that's the box. <laughs> so I'll open him up. Now, how much do those usually uh, cost? So retail, it's saying 65 But I got these at FYE when they were like Clarence. 20 bucks. Yeah, they do they still have those. Do they still have those at FYE to this day? Because I don't have an FYE near me. I have to travel like about forty minutes north. So I don't know if it'd be best to probably call or. Yeah, they might. Um, depending on the FYE, they, these were for. I don't know if they just didn't sell, but they were in like the back of the store. So there, there's tricks the rabbit. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty good size, you know. It's about mm-hmm. six to seven, eight inches. Oh, yeah, for sure. Those would be cool like for, like, statues and whatnot. Yeah, they're definitely more along the lines of statues. So there's that one. Uh, you said you like McDonald's, so let me show you Ronald's. Propaganda. Okay. That's the line, propaganda. Here's, like, uh, Ronald McDonald as, like, a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. I think there's another one, too, of him. I, I haven't seen it. But... That's pretty cool. Goes away later. So I brought. There's two more I grabbed. Yeah, this one's Frank and Mary. This one's one of my favorites of them. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. He's... <laughs> yeah, I love that a lot. <laughs> He's like, tell your wife not to be mad at me. Um, I know Amanda, you might have some new gift ideas. And then the last one. This is my favorite. This is my favorite one. So here's Fat Tony. Oh, that's cool. So Tony the Tiger, and he's got like little whiskers too, like these little whiskers. Those are pretty cool. Move around, so he's. I'll definitely look into those and see which ones they have and whatnot, because those would actually be pretty cool to have as statues. I thought they were gonna look kind of like more like on the goo- I don't want to say on the goofy side because they do look goofy, but you know what I mean. Something that looked, um, I don't know, something very small but very expensive. You know what I mean? I would, I would have passed on that if that would have been the case. Now they do have a Quisp too, I think, and I have a, I have the Toucan. And there's one more that I have. I think I have the the Cocoa Puffs guy. I have Toucan Sam. I had the. I think I'm missing the um, uh, Lucky, Lucky the Le- Leprechaun, and mm-hmm. I did have the Rice Krispies, but it was really weird. I actually took that one back. It was so weird. It's like all three of the Rice Krispie treat or the Rice Krispies brothers, but they're like smushed together into one like monster. Uh, I know you're. Oh God, like, like the thing, thing. like the thing. <laughs> Yeah, and it's got like three like their faces are. It was like this is gross. Like this is I don't want this. So I took I I returned it. Um, yeah, they're pretty neat. I, I would not have picked them up if they were sixty seventy dollars for sure in the store. Like they they were all on clearance, and um, I had I like using coupons and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, like they were all they were just there in the back. So yeah, here are all my mystery minis. Now, all of my favorite ones, I have to say, and I'm not even lying to you, is Twinkie the Kid, because his pop version does not have that. <laughs> the the what is that? The so it's supposed to be yeah, it's supposed to be where the filling's supposed to be. None of his, none of the normal Funko Pops have that. I killed that they would have had that. They didn't have that. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So, and the other, the other thing I was looking through them to see if there was any that they had not made a pop of yet. Because I know at first the owl, they hadn't. They now they do, but they didn't have a pop of the owl when the when the minis came out. I don't think. No. Yeah. No. They didn't when they first came out with these. I was not wanting any of these. I did not care about Funko Minis. I was like, I don't want any of these. I was like, they're probably going to get lost. I was like, they're going to get ruined. Yeah. I'm trying to um, figure out where to buy um, the case that you can put mus- the mystery minis in. Because I know that they, I think they said that you can get them at the container store. If I, okay. yeah, I think so. I think they're like 10 bucks or something, but I haven't had a chance to buy one yet. Um, I have these all individually wrapped up. 
um, so that this way they don't get damaged. But I want to try to get one because this way I can put them all in there. Um, mm-hmm. I thought because I didn't know the ratios of these at all, I did not think he or him were going to be uh, 72 pieces. Um, I actually thought the Jolly Green Giant, I thought he would have been the 72 pieces because he, his normal ones back there, I have him like on a cloth because he's like wobbly and won't stand right. Since he was just like flat, like everybody else, basically, I actually thought he was because he's the only one that is chrome, basically, or metallic, I should say, not chrome. So is that the the whole mini set? Yep, I got the whole mini set. I don't know how much they go as a total together, um, but I bought them off a guy for 75 bucks for the whole thing, for the whole collection. That's not bad at all. When you think about how much a case would be, you know, a case of 12... <clears throat> and you would um, you wouldn't get them all in that case. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be getting one. He's a one in thirty six ver- uh piece right here. So he's about forty bucks, something like that. And then he's about at fifty, sixty bucks. Uh, oh. The fruit brute. Yeah, he's about there. He's about that much. But I figured it was a steal to get all these for about seventy something dollars because the guy didn't want them, and I'm like, oh. I'll take them <laughs> right up here are the pop pez. Now I don't have all of them. Of course, I'm hoping I can get all of them, um, but I don't have all. Of them. I've been trying to see if people have any of the pop pezes or like their little Funko ad icon pins, but I think I saw you posted about that in our Facebook group, the Funko pop fans, I think recently about, does anybody have any of these? I did anybody. Yeah. I'm actually or... hoping because they have a ton of them. They have a uh, smoke. I was about to say Smokey, the giant Smokey, the bear, um they have the quake and quisp which i wanted to they had uh i don't think they had uh there was a few more unless that might have been it maybe no they had the captain i know they had the other captain crunch and then they had jean lafoot and the crunch berry beast so Mm -hmm. yeah there's still about a handful that i want um but yeah i got him when i got the toucan up there I got him when I got him as well in a bundle deal for like, I think like 35 bucks. Um, and then there's all the monster cereals that I was able to get with Amanda. And then there's my Sprout and Green Giant and Big Boy, which I got at uh, Hobby Lobby. Uh, believe it or not, they sell uh, a lot of those and some of the ad icons. Oh. Um, and then there's my Common Captain Crunch, which they have two different chases of him. They have him in black and white and then they have him i think on a black uh what do you call it on a black pez piece um the other ones i'm missing as well are the uh the pez version ones like pez boy and then pez firefighter and the pez girls i wanted those ones as well yeah and then there's my (laughs) funko verse kool-aid man i thought that he was another one that i got um during target con when i got the 10 inch kool-aid man and then the um, the Rosie Riveter and uh, uh, Uncle Sam, and then right here is my jo- uh, Green Giant Sprout two pack, and then right there is my Hetty Spaghetti and Jolly Bee two pack, which I love as well. Jolly Bee is one of my favorite ones. Um, the cool thing is, is that when I went to Chicago to go with uh, my son to go to Minecraft Con, the Comic Con Minecraft thing, mm-hmm. um, Mine Con, that's what it's called, Mine Con. Uh, mm-hmm. I drove forty minutes to go try that and i thought it was the greatest thing ever really fresh the flavor comes from the gravy now you can eat the chicken if you want to but it lacks a little bit in the flavor but the reason that is is because if you dip it inside of the gravy that's where the um that's where the the flavor basically combines oh okay so you went to the restaurant yeah yeah i went to the restaurant cool and then snap crackle pop which is also I got off from Brian. Then there's the Jolly Bee on his delivery bike. And you have the the coveted five pack, the McDonald's coveted. Yep, I got the McDonald's five pack. I got that um from Brian as well for a hundred dollars. Which was pretty you know, it was pretty fair. I tried getting him on the McDonald's on the Golden Arch website and that they didn't give no warning on that. I remember when they dropped um, them on there, I was asleep and my ma- my phone blew up with a bunch of messages from like a bunch of my friends. And they're like, oh my God, you're going to be mad in the morning. And I woke up and I'm like, 
what am I going to be mad about? And then I've seen all over Facebook that they <laughs> they said that um, they dropped him at about one in the morning mm. randomly. Yeah. yeah, they dropped him about one in the morning, and nobody there was no warning either. And then they got sold out instantly. They say it was by bots. I don't know how it happened. Um, yeah, but they said who's, up, it, who's that up at one in the morning on the McDonald's website just randomly? I know that's what I said. I was I was just like, oh my god! I was like sitting there, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, who who would be doing that? And then they were supposed to drop him again, and they never did. But supposedly, and I don't know how true this is. Um, I don't know if it's still up on GameStop website. Um, they're supposed to be getting the McDonald's five pack as well because I don't think they have a stock image for them, but they still had the name up. I seen how much they, uh, they were going for like sixty dollars and everything, but this was like a few months ago, about two months ago, about two and a half. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's not up just because of COVID and whatnot. Um, yeah. So I assume you they're not common or anything. Let me move him out of the way in the spike oh, here. Yeah. Wait a minute, are you moving? Are those OG ad icons that you just have out of the box? Yeah, these ones I got from Brian when I bought um, the Metallics and the San, uh, San Diego Comic-Con Big Boy. Um, mm -hmm. He sold these to me as well. I wanted them. I was like, you know, I have to have them. I wanted to have some loose. Um, obviously, yeah. I'm not going to open up my own. <laughs> right. Well, if you, so if you was, ever decide that, hey, I got some in the box and I don't really need the loose ones anymore, you, you now you know how to contact me. So if you, if you, ever oh yeah, for sure. If you ever want these, we can definitely talk about it and whatnot. You know what I mean? I'm definitely not worried about it. Yeah. And then as you can see, all these now, the funny thing is, is that this was like very, uh, this was like a big argument starter because with the buy pack, they're all the same as the single ones. Right. The only difference is if, if you want that sticker, the sticker, only thing, if you just want the sticker, a lot of people, argued and everything over the stickers and stuff like that so they're like you know what i mean that's the that's the only thing i don't know why but that's just how they are <laughs> yeah people are, are definitely into the stickers and i understand it's part of the the look of the of the box and stuff and i mean me yeah. i'm an out of box collector and there's nothing necessarily wrong with being in box or out of box but um, oh yeah for sure but if you're going out of box and you may then i wouldn't even waste the money on just doing it for that you know I, i'd rather pay about sixty dollars. Well, let me think. Sixty. Yeah. Well, I guess it's about the same price. But if you have to go aftermarket, I would just stick with singles rather than getting the five pack because the five pack is, I think, like between a hundred and two hundred dollars. Yeah. And they and if you're going to be, you know, I mean, you do out of box, you may as well just get the singles and call it a day. Right. Yeah. Especially if they're in the same pose and everything. It's not like they're anything special. I hope. I hope that. Um. I see you on Funko TV with. Uh, I'll just show right here with uh, Mayor McCheese. They showed off on one of his protos that he was supposed to be having his glasses in his hand. So we're to expect another Mayor McCheese at some point. When? I don't know. He's going to be doing a um, coming out at some point with uh, with his glasses. And then Mayor Mc, I mean, I mean, then Officer Mac, I assume they'll make one with uh, him blowing his whistle. Uh -huh. Of course. Yeah, I would assume so because one of the photos that they leaked about him, he was blowing his whistle. He wasn't. He wasn't in this pose, so I'm assuming they might drop that at some point, unless that was like a custom or something like that. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense that they would come out with those. But you got the Emerald. Is that the Emerald City Sour Patch Kid? Yep, that's the Emerald City Com uh, Sour Patch one. He is a thousand pieces as well. I was going to sell him um, when. I was tight with finances at the time, and I looked at his price. I'm like, I'm not selling him. I bought him for $120, oh, and wow. now he's at about he was at about five six hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah, he's crazy expensive. I was adding these to the ad icon lines. Um, all of them. There's orange and then blue raspberry, lime, lemon, and uh, was it red berry? Yeah. Um. I added these into the ad icons at the time. And um, after they came out with the foodies line, which again, this is the ones I'm getting as well with the hostess uh, mm -hmm. donuts and then spam can and all of them. Yeah. I realized that those are all going to be part of the food line. So I, I'm assuming they're going to be added to these line, this line. Basically I'm assuming these are going to be considered foodies. We should be definitely super proud of being able to track those down. Cause you know, that's one thing people may not realize about being a collector. It's not easy to find 
what you're looking for at the, con the condition you're looking for at the price you're looking for. There's so many different variables to it. And it's, it's definitely a long, a long game. And you, when you can sit back and you can see all those ad icons and you can see the metallics and the glow in the darks. And most of them are, are some, you know, fairly mint, you know, that's, that's pretty impressive. So. Yeah. I, it was actually very, it was very, it was a very nice feeling when I got to chase blueberry um, because I successfully, and this is not just in the United States, of course, um, this is like in the world. I was successful in tracking down five chase blueberries. I was successful in tracking down five. Um, I will tell people that are watching this, that if they try to go after that chase blueberry on pot price guide, don't do it. He sold it to the guy that I bought it off. <laughs> so, oh, <wow. laughs> so may as well nip that in the bud right now. I successfully tracked down five. Um, a few of them were not letting them go. One of my friends that I deal with and whatnot, um, he actually has one. He's he and I, I'm not lying to you. He and I are the only known ones that have a complete ad icon set. Wow. Which he um he's not letting go of his either. He actually bought his from one of the guys. He um had two of them and he sold one to a gentleman that said he would sell his for a hundred thousand dollars, which I, <laughs> I I was just like shaking my head. Like, <laughs> I was like, I would may as well not even name a price, really, if that's the case. And then um my friend, he's got the other one and his is the more damaged version. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's got his as well. And then I got mine. Like I said, I don't know anybody else that has a complete ad eye concept besides I've, either. I've never heard of anybody except for you that has one. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy too, because with the chase blueberry, we actually don't know how many are out there. There's supposed to be 24 out there. We have no idea. For all we know, employer, I mean, employees, a bunch of the employees could have got one. You know what I mean? For all we know, Brian might have one. You right. know what I mean? Probably in his office up there. And you know what I mean? For all, we don't know how many were actually May. We only go by ear, unfortunately, with Chase Blueberry. He's not as easy to track down. Like I said, five, five years. In two years, I tracked down five of them successfully. Wow. One in Australia. Um, and the others were in the United States. There's one where I'm at in Michigan. There's Pennsylvania. Um, there's one in Cal. I think there's like one in California, or no? There's I think there's like no. There's one in California, and I think the other ones in Virginia. Like Willie so, and the Golden Tickets. There's just like a handful out there. Well, I know those ones are crazy. <laughs> if we um, do, you mind taking it down? Uh, do you, Do you mind taking it down and and cradling it or <laughs> whatever you want to do with the, the, the chase blueberry and um yeah for sure yeah oh, right there right there you already have it down look at that that's so <laughs> awesome. yeah no let me see if i can get a better shot of it so as you can see there he is right there wow and then there's that I'll put the flashlight on. This is the, this is the flashlight that you can use, and then um, I'll uh, stick this on there while I'm showing off the rest of the Funko Pops and talking, and then come towards the end. Um, I'll show off the glow and everything else like that, so people can actually see it firsthand. <laughs> awesome. So I, there's probably a lot of people that have never seen, me included, have never seen the Chase Blueberry like this close before. I would imagine. I, I looked on YouTube and everything, and you're actually, I think, the first person that's ever going to be posting this. So, <laughs> oh wow, wow, yeah. I was like looking around. The only chase blueberries ever the Funko sodas, and yeah, no. And then down here on the bottom, see if I can show you. I'll show you the damage. You can kind of see right there where he's damaged. Oh yeah, it's not bad at all. I mean, when, nah, there's that, it, and then. Uh, let me see. He's got a cross here. You can see that little white right there. There's a crease going across here. Like I said, I'm not complaining about it just because um, yeah. I think his top is okay. But uh, let me see if there's anywhere else around here. It's where it's hard to own a pop protector. Um, yeah, there's like a little damage up there and everything. It's so rare that any pop box, like any pop box, is going to be like mint 
no. I'm not complaining. I'm all. definitely not complaining. A little, the sticker too is like a little bit peeling, which I don't, you know what I mean? I'm not complaining because there's only 24 pieces. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to find one that's in mint condition like that. Like old school comic books. Like really. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing is, is that I was like looking and everything. And then let me see if I can. You can kind of see like little speckles. I don't think you can. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to see it. You can kind of see it looks like it's sweating a little. Yeah. Yeah. I was like keeping an eye on that because the um, the normal blueberry that I have that I bought with from that guy with the other two, he um, he didn't tell me this either. I actually had to tell the person I sold it to in Canada. He had glue residue. It turned brown like the plastic was turning brown oh. on his arm over here. So I sold him that one and I told him about it and I just kept my normal – uh, the one I got from eBay because mine was in better condition. So I was like, you know, yeah. what I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna settle for that, especially if it's glue. I don't want to take it out and wreck it, you know, because I, mean? I don't know if it's like actually attached to it or anything like that. So here's the art series: Batman, Batman, another Batman, another one. Those ones I got after they sold out everywhere. I oh. got these guys at tar at my Target um, near me, and they um. They had them out at different times, so I was pretty happy. Instead of paying about about one hundred and fifty dollars, I was like paying, you know, what I mean, retail price. So I was pretty happy about that. And then there's Jack Skellington, Zero. He was the first one I got for the art series. Oh. Jack Skellington, which is the Hot Topic version. Scooby Doo. I don't have the purple Scooby Doo, unfortunately. I missed that one as well, which I'm hoping to get. Oh. Um, and then there's Bugs Bunny. I don't like his design. It, looks pretty bland and dark you can't really see the designs on not like how it is and yeah it's not work yeah it's not it's not in my favor honestly and then there's my two head honchos <laughs> and then there's all the cans and then up here we'll start oh look at that she -Ra. i know i like this one over the normal like you said they don't have that much detail as to the new ones but i like this one more and the cool thing is is that it's actually autographed if you can see it oh, it says man. um it's got the actress's name that voiced her in the animated series um animation series now, and it says for the honor of gray skull oh my gosh now did you get that signed or did you buy it signed no that's actually quite funny um we're gonna go to that conversation now i got her from a guy in australia for 800 oh wow I got him and I got her from a guy in Australia. He did. He didn't want to do Funko Pops anymore. So he's like, he messaged me and he told me he had it and it, it was autographed. And I'm like, well, how many pieces are autographed with she of all things? Not many. I would, I would assume not many. And then there's Spike or which these two are, he's not, he's meant. He's not, he's got shelfware. Oh, uh -huh. but I mean, Better than having a crease. Yeah. And then there's Hordak, Scare Glow with the official sticker. Nice. Then there's Man at Arms. These ones, that some of these, I don't, these two I don't have uh, pop protectors for because I have to get some more, unfortunately. Um, then there's Man at Arms. There's the official sticker for New York Comic Con Beast Man, which I got in the Philippines. Huh. Uh, there's Merman. There's Moss Man. There's Stinkor, which my brother got me for my birthday. Then there's Ram Man, which he got me for my birthday as well. Then there's Triclops. Then Slime Pit He Man. Nice. Then there's my Glow in the Dark He Man. So what? What glow, his face glows, or what part of him glows? Oh, just literally his arm, just his little chest piece and his sword. That's it. And it's oh, not okay. even a good glow. It's not even a good glow. <laughs> And then there's Prince Adam, Sorceress, Tongue Lasher. Then there's Cyclone. Then there's Mosquito. Webster. That one's the Hot Topic one. Now that I had to explain to them at Walmart that that was actually a Walmart exclusive because they were not understanding the fact that they went from Hot Topic to Walmart. I had like a 15-minute discussion with them on that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
than the Skeletor. I like this one over the 480 piece glow. Yes. Yeah, that one's cool. I like that one. I was not settling for any other Skeletor just because he had, um, they had the green mixed in there. I didn't care for that one. I wanted the yellow one. They dropped him and I was, I had to get him. He's basically the armor one, uh, just with the glow in a dark yellow face. And plus with the yellow, I mean, with the silver ram head. Oh, nice. Then there's blast attack, clawful, ninja. Then King has. Yep, but that's the whole collection. <laughs> wow, that's the that's the amazing complete set of the ad icons. That's so crazy. And thank you so much for showing that Chase Booberry and p- taking that down and showing everybody because that's I, I'm a, assuming not a lot of people have ever seen that that close before. Here, let me see if um I can get the uh show you the glow. Okay, well, not nice. I see the glow now. Look at the glow. Yeah. Wow. He's probably the best one that I have that gives off a glow. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, it's really, really cool. That's it's a lot of glow. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, I think it's so cool. <laughs> now, I know your wife was in the room with you. Did you just turn the lights off on her too? No, nah, she's the one that actually turned it off. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> She turned it off. Well, you should be very proud of that. And you're in a very exclusive group, very exclusive group that has that pop. So, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, let, let me let's end with one last question that I asked some of the previous collectors on uh, mm-hmm. uh, and see what you think about it. So if you if you only could keep one of your pops and I think I know the answer to this based on what we've been talking about. But if you can only keep one of your pops for some reason and you, you, you know, you got rid of all the other ones, but you just keep one. Which one would you keep and why? So if I had to come to it, because I'll answer that with two, I'll actually answer that with two answers. Um, obviously, it would be Chase Blueberry because he's more so considered an asset. I hunted him down forever, mm-hmm. and he is honestly like one of my favorite pops of one of my favorite serial monsters. What's so great about the Chase Blueberry? To some, they're like, "Oh, it's a glow in the dark pop," you know. What I mean, whatever. Mm-hmm. But to us that know about him, I tell them that he's phasing. That's what it is. It's like he's phasing. Like a functional. It, 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 yeah, it, like how, like how, like in one of the commercials, they slammed the door in his face when he was like trying to offer them blueberry for the first time, and they slammed the door, and he like just comes and phases through the door. That's what like I thought was like the coolest thing. And I was like telling people that I'm like that's what I think of when it's blueberry, like he's coming to appear to you, and then his other pieces are him being solid. You know what I mean? So I tell him like that is what I like about chase blueberry now if i didn't have the chase blueberry <laughs> then the one thing i would not sell would bring my jeffrey the giraffe just because of the simple fact that he is the one that i got when i worked at toys r us and that's like basically my final memory of working there because i worked there uh two years prior to them shutting down and i was like one of the last employees a lot of them already jumped ship because they were shutting down so they were looking for other jobs um, I basically stayed till the end. So my manager was able to give all of us each uh, Jeffrey the giraffe because that was like our final thing. Jeffrey grew up. So, you know, what I mean, it was just like a very heart touching and sentimental moment for all of us. That's really neat that they did that, that your manager did that. That's really awesome. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool i was like really happy for it well thank you brandon for spending the the the, the evening with me and kind of walking through your collection and you know it'd be neat to maybe check back in with you in the future as inevitably more ad icons come out and we can check in and see sure i'm hoping that what i'm hoping like later on then we'll be able to do another video and then i'll be able to show you all all the other ones yeah you are going to be coming through the new year the next 55 to 60 McDonald's pops that are going to come out over the next year. Oh, that God, I already know all them chicken those. nuggets. I already know all them chicken nuggets are going to take up about half of them. I'm like thinking to myself, like they already made like what, six or seven of them. I'm like, they're going to probably make like a thousand more with all the different costumes. <laughs> so many chicken nuggets. But um, well, cool. Well, thank you, Brandon, for your time. And and, and I, I, I'm going to I'm going to jump into the, the YouTube spiel at the end of here at the end of this video here. So if you like this video and if you want to see other collectors and other pop culture type content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment, let us know, let Brandon know what you thought about his collection questions you have. Do you like the ad icons? What I, what ad icons do you have? 
you know, let us know, comment below, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, as always keep, keep collecting if you're a collector and, you know, we'll see you next time. So thank you again, Brandon, for, for being, thank on. you for having me.